can. Okay, good. Ethan, uh, so the the content of the course. وإذا كان عندك أي سؤال فلا تتردد يمكنك أن تسألين تسأل تسألني عن ذلك مثلا إن شاء الله أوكي إذا دعنا نبدأ بسم الله So I'll go ahead and share my screen Can you see my screen? No No should be able to see it now, right? Yes, I, I see it. Okay, good. Yeah. So uh, let's begin presentation. It's just going to be a quick presentation, inshallah. So um, like I said, if you have any questions, just stop me and talk to me. It's not just one conversation. It's me and you. So if you need anything is not making, it's not clear in your mind, just ask me. So the title of the course is going to be business student English course. So it's for mm -hmm. um, business students or students that are trying to get into business. As you all know, mm -hmm. NBA or PMP, all of those are going to be heavy in English, especially if you want to learn in America, in London, in all of those uh, English speaking countries. So. Uh, mm -hmm. You will need to know the language, especially as, is, as it portrays to business in general. And just the English of business is not an easy English. Even if somebody was speaking English fluently, they might have trouble understanding some terms uh, when it comes Wait, to business. Can you, turn, <clears throat> can you turn up your voice? Because your voice is fast. Can I turn it up? I don't know the problem for me or. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll try to speak up a little bit. Is it better? Same. Same. Huh. Okay, let me. What about now? Is it better? Yeah, apparently a little bit. Okay, so I'll try to speak up, inshallah. Uh, it's, it's going to be better. Mm -hmm. Is your volume all the way up? Yeah, my volume is full. Okay. okay. 100%. Okay, so I'll try to speak up and that's not a problem. Um, so, um, like I was saying, the class, the class is going to be on business English. So... Can you hear me now? Yes, I can still hear you, yes. Can we continue? Is everything fine now, technically? Can you can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, continue. Okay. Can we keep going? Keep going. Okay. So like I was saying, uh, so for any language, there are four main skills that you need to acquire. Mm -hmm. It's the same in Arabic, it's the same in uh, French, it's the same in any other language. Now, the difference is, for example, if you are learning um, English just to speak it, then you need one of those skills, just speaking and listening, or two of those skills, speaking and listening. If you are learning, English for academic purposes, most of the time you need all four skills. So you would need to know how to speak. You will need to know how to read the material, especially in uh, business courses. There is a lot of material to cover and a lot of it is going to be through reading because um, at that point you will be, the, the teacher would know or will assume that you already know the basics in English. You are able to read in English without any problem. So reading is going to be That's most... That's my problem with reading, exactly. And I, I can write in a say, listening is good, alhamdulillah. Speaking, uh, you, you can <coughs> tell me any notice if you, if you notice in my speak. 
But the problem with reading, that's my problem. Really? Because when I see, when I open the book and read and face a lot of words, I don't understand what they are meaning. I feel frustrated after that. I close the book and that's, that, that's, that's my that, problem. I think that's, that yeah, happens to a lot of people that are getting into the language. Because at one point, especially when you are, when you know how to speak, and then you open a book, but you don't really understand anything. It's kind of frustrating. The reason, one of the main reason is because you try to understand everything. And I will tell you one secret that even native English speakers don't understand 100% of what they are reading. But you take it into really? context. Once you put it into the context, you are able to know what the overall context context is. From now, from, from time to time, you will be able you will see one word and that word is very critical in those time that's when you take that word and then you try to see what the meaning is but stop trying to know every single word that's not going to happen and yes if, that's my problem exactly yes so just exactly i i want i want i want to know every word in the sentence you know each word in the <laughs> sentence i want to uh, i need to to um to know what? Yes, I, I think that's um, that's very common. I, I faced that same problem before when I was learning Arabic. I would open up a book, I would try to know every single word. But the, the, the key is just get what get the point. Once you get the point, even yeah. you as a native Arab speaker, even if you opened up a book you might not know every single thing but that doesn't frustrate you in arabic but it frustrates you in english because in arabic you know what 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 the goal is what the your the goal is just for you to understand it's not for you to know every single word yeah so that's one yes. habit that you need to break out of because it's not going to help you because knowing every single word is not the point the point is understanding the material so that's the reading part, and that's going to be heavy in business English. So just try to understand, break it down by small, small chunks, small paragraphs, and try to absorb that material, not focusing on each single word. As for the writing, yeah. that comes with, I think, reading and knowing what you want to write. Since you are the one doing the writing, of course you're not going to uh, pick a word that you doesn't you don't know. So uh, writing is very also very important in business classes as well as listening because the teacher will be talking to you. So it's very critical that you know how to uh, how to how to listen and to uh, understand the teacher. So it's one thing to just listen and it's another thing to understand exactly what the teacher is saying. So those are the four main skills that is going to be included into the business English courses. So uh, you will need, when, when I say business English, it's more of a general term, not just focused on studying, but even in the real world, once you go engage in work, working with people that only speak English or people that speak foreign languages so most of the time English is your melting point so English is still going to be the common language that you will be able to communicate with say your uh, people that are under you or people that are above you like your supervisors and your managers and as well as maybe the employees so the focus of the class is going to be those four areas mainly through reading because I think reading is the one skill that combines all of them. Why is that? Because when you read, especially uh, when you read, first of all, you have to be able to understand. And um, reading out loud, for example, will help you with speaking. And reading also out loud or listening to somebody read also will help you with listening. And reading no, tells you or teaches you new terms and new uh, sentence structure to be able to know how to write. When you want to write a business paper 
For example, this is how you how you how you start. This is the format. This is uh, the words that are formal, and these words are are informal. In Arabic, I know you 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 have um, the colloquial language, which is uh, the lahja, and then there is the fusha. And the lahja, you don't yes, find yes. it. You don't find it in in dictionaries, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But fusha is what is well, what's on the dictionaries. But for English, it's a little bit different. There is no such thing uh, as uh, a fusha, or there there is, but it's not very common. The, there is only one type of English, or the one main type, and that main type is broken down into two uh, separate, not separate because they 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 inter entangle into one, one another, and that's the formal. Uh, way of speaking and the informal way of speaking, but they are both um, fusha, as you as, as you would say. They are both mm -hmm. correct ways of talking, and they are both found in the dictionary. So, for example, when I say um, uh, "I will get back to you," "I will get back to you," that's an informal way of talking, but that's proper English. I will get back to you. I can. Uh, the the formal way might be, I will uh, I, I will uh, reply back to you as soon as possible. For example, I will reply back or I I will respond back. I will get back. It's a way. If it's a formal, it's an informal way, and I will reply back is a uh, formal way. So both are proper way of saying of talking, but it just depends on who you are talking to. If you are talking to a friend. You can say, I will get back to you ASAP. If you are talking to a, a manager, you can say, I will respond as soon as possible. And or in a business matter, you will talk, you will say, I will respond uh, accordingly, or I will respond in a timely manner. So all of those are ways of talking. So our focus on this in this class will be the vocabulary, most um but the problem with just the vocabulary is everything has grammar added into it so if you have zero knowledge of grammar it's going to be hard when i say grammar it doesn't mean uh, like knowing that this is a noun and that's a uh, verb and so on or the conjugation of every single verb because that might not come up as a in an English business class, so grammar it just means that you know proper a sentence structure. So when I say hello Ahmed, how are you? You will not say I I fine. You will say I am fine or I'm doing well, so on. So um, there's two things when it comes to language, and that <coughs> is the material, which is the book that we will learn and that book is called um, uh, vocabulary business vocabulary in use and then the teacher which is me and hopefully i can deliver the message uh, the content in a manner that you will be able to understand if not always feel free to stop me and ask me questions and the most important thing is you because you have to put in the work i have to be able to read and then try to do the assignments try to do the work in your own time and ask questions because uh, i can talk i can tell you something and think that it's it's um it's understood but unless you tell me hey i don't really understand or hey i didn't quite get that then i will be able to go back and try to explain it to you in a different manner until you are able to get it so for the course requirements we expect you to have a basic grasp on the English language, which hopefully you do because you, you are able to talk very uh, fluently and know how to uh, get out the proper sentences and without really having any trouble. So if you are uh, able to just have a basic grasp on the English language, uh, hopefully you will benefit from this course. and. Um, and which which you are but if you were 
beginning in English, that this is not a course for you, or if you were just, um, you were still struggling with your grammar, still struggling to get out proper, uh, proper sentences, then that also would be hard for you to able to, to understand the business English. So we talked about the importance of reading as it combines all the all of the four skills in some way or another. So one more important thing to note is we touched on that a little bit ago is don't try to know everything. Just focus on your progress as far as as long as you are progressing every single day a little bit. That's all that matters. So it's um, it's, it's, it's like a flower, the flower that doesn't just come up and open up one day, but it slowly, slow, slowly come, comes, comes into maturation and then blooms. So just Stop take your time. Place. And uh, as long as we learn something new, that's our goal, to just try to learn something new every day. And um, hopefully we will reach that level. And uh, now we'll go ahead and start. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm open. I I have a question. What uh, what, what did you say in my English? Did you say did you notice something is bad and not connect with this course? No, everything. With, with the... As 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 I was talking to you, I know that you are able to understand what I'm saying, right? Yes. So since you understand that, that, that that's the listening part. And you also are able to express your thoughts on what I'm saying. So that's also, uh, that's the speaking part. Um, the writing part, like I said, it's, it, it's gotta come with, um, as that, that's, I would say the e easier than speaking. Writing is easier than speaking, and uh, reading is going to come as as long as you just pick up every uh, some words here and there. So, to me, your English is suitable for for uh, for the course. It's just business in general is like I said previously. It's not even people that are uh, learning or people that are native in English don't quite get everything everything there is to to know about the english in business so uh, hopefully this will be beneficial for you inshallah are you able to see my screen still yes i i see it okay what do you see i see slider business vocabulary news Okay. Let's start here. What do you see now? Nothing. Same. No. no. Same. Same slide. work on jobs. Okay. So um, this is the book that we will be using, which is a book in business vocabulary in use. So it's the, 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 the vocabulary that you will be hearing a lot. And also, of course, it's going to help your general vocabulary, but mostly focusing into uh, the business aspect of things. So what, what do you say when I tell you, Ahmed, what do you do? You ask about my job. Definitely. So if you didn't know, I, I encounter a, a lot of people would have this one problem. And when, it, when, they, when you, they hear, what do you do? 
they might automatically think, what, what are you doing? So there's a difference between what do you do and what are you doing? When I say, Ahmed, what are you doing right now? What would you say? What are you doing? And you ask about my situation now. Yes, so you would, you would reply, I'm learning or I'm having a meeting, I'm in a call, something like mm -hmm. that. But when I say, what do you do? You would respond, um, I, I work as an engineer or I work as in a, in a, as a um, petroleum engineer, as a teacher, teacher nice. and so on. So that's one uh, difference. And it's it's a small difference, but unless somebody tell teaches you to to you or you are a native, you wouldn't really know that that's what it meant. So those type of vocabularies are the ones that we are we will learn throughout the course and know the small details that are going to enter into our everyday vocabulary and our business vocabulary in general. So here I will go ahead and read. So um, what do you do? The response, I work for a large European car maker. I work on car design. So you see that he used I work twice. I work for and I work on. Do you, yes, see, the, see. Do, do you see the difference between I, I work for? for Yeah, I work for, for something, for the company. Yes. But I work to, yeah, I work on um, my subject, I think, my subject. Exactly. In fact, I run the design department and I manage a team of designers. 20 people work under me. There, there it goes again, work under me. So there is work under me and work above. So under means people that are that you are responsible for. Work mm -hmm. above. I am I'm responsible about about uh, my brothers and same, something like that, right? I'm I'm responsible for. Responsible always use for. Yeah. For. So when you say I'm responsible about yeah. It's it might be something else, but it's I'm responsible for taking care of my brothers. Mm. So uh, he says one of my main responsibilities is to make sure that the new model designs are finished on time. I'm also in charge of design budgets. I, de I deal with a lot of different people in the company. I'm responsible for coordination. So responsible for, always use responsible with for, okay? Between design, between design and production, I work with managers at our manufacturing plants. That means, so here we have, I work for, I work on, which is what you are working on, like the material, for example, a, an engineer is works on computers in information technology engineer works on computers i manage a team of designers um, i'm also in charge in charge means also one of my responsibilities so being in charge of something means it's also your responsibility okay so here Okay. Is I'm uh, working in, uh, I'm in charge. In charge, always use off. So I'm in charge of uh, taking out trash. I'm in charge of cooking. That means I'm responsible for cooking. So when you say I'm in charge of, it also means I'm responsible for. So when I ask you, Ahmed, what are you in charge of? Can just give me any anything. It doesn't have to be actual things that you are in charge. It can be also depending on what you want. I'm in charge of 
I prepare items for customer. So I'm in charge of preparing. Charge of whenever the ver whenever there's a, a verb that comes after that, the verb is going to end in ing. So in charge of, responsible for. If there is a verb that comes after that, it's going to end in ing. If it's a noun, you can just tell say the noun. I'm in charge of. Um, I'm in charge of uh, the trash. You can say that. Or I'm in charge of taking out the trash. Taking. So it ends with ing. Uh, charge. <clears throat> Um, I have to add uh, ing. In charge of, no in charge of, and responsible for both. You have to add ing to the verb. Mm -hmm. So, can you go ahead and uh, give me any other example? Mm. Uh... I charge of uh, buying. I am? Uh, Say that again. I'm, I'm charge of. I'm in charge. I'm in charge, charge of, of it, buying. I'm in charge. I'm in charge of buying uh, the rent for. Um, OK. I'm charge of. Uh, I'm charge. I'm, I'm in, in charge of yes. Yeah, I'm in charge of to make retail, making retail. In the I'm in to the system. I'm, so just try to make it as simple as possible. I'm in charge of making. There's nothing else. There's no other preposition that that is going to be between of and making. So it's just I'm in charge of making the budget. I'm in charge of uh taking care of my brothers i'm in charge of um feeding the cat i'm in charge of um any other words i'm in charge of running the business so it's just the verb with ing nothing else and then you say what you are in charge of Can you go ahead and try it again? Charge of. Try. <clears throat> uh, I'm charge of. I'm, 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 I'm in, in charge of yes. closing the door. I'm in charge of closing the door. Nice. Good. Now use the I'm same one with of, uh, responsible for. I'm re <clears throat> I'm responsible for making new invoices. For, I'm sorry, for making? New invoices. I, I didn't quite get that. Making new what? New invoices, invoices built. Mm, maybe I'm not hearing you well. I mean, but you did use the I'm responsible for correctly. So that's the main thing that we want to get out here. So I'm responsible for, then the verb with ing, same thing with in charge of, mm -hmm. verb with ing, or it could also be a noun. So I'm in charge of my brother. That's possible. If it's a noun, then you don't have to use ing, obviously. I'm responsible for my brother. I'm responsible for my sister. I'm responsible for the rent. I'm responsible for the bills and so on. That's using a noun. But if it's a verb, always. I have an example. OK. I don't responsible I am, for I am, my, I am not my friends. Responsible. I am not responsible for my for my friend's action. Nice. Yes. You definitely are not responsible. Yeah. So that's using a, a a a noun you can also use verbs and that's going to end with ing now 
if you want to say, for example, one of my responsibilities is, you can say one of my responsibilities is to uh, cook. One of my responsibilities is, when I say is without using to, then I have to say one of my responsibilities is cooking. Mm. So when I say to, about something, um... then, go ahead. So when I say to, then I have to just give the infinitive of the verb, which is just the verb as it is. So is to make, or is cooking, is making. When I use the, the to, then I, I, I should not put ing on there. And if I don't use the to, I, I can put the ing in there. So you can try and just practice well, with these two and uh, give me any kind of examples that might come to your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, uh, you have to examine now. Yes, just one one or two examples. About, one with, about, about responsible of? Huh? One of my responsibilities. Uh, responsible for? Now, one of my responsibilities is Uh, one, I am responsibility. I am responsibility. I am responsible for fixing my car. For is, uh, I am responsible is fixing my car. I'm responsible for fixing my car. One of my responsibilities is fixing my car. One of my responsibilities is to fix my car. So just one word can give you, and then. Obviously, once you enter the business world, uh, when you say one of my responsibilities is to making sure, automatically that creates a problem because you are not. When I start, when I start the sentence, one of my responsibility mm, to uh, making coffee. That's. That, that's not correct in, gram in, in grammar, because one of my responsibilities is to, once you use to, at that point, then use the infinitive of the verb. So is to make sure, or is to uh, make coffee. But when you don't use the preposition to, to, one of my responsibilities is making coffee. So try it and give me one example with one of my responsibilities is to. <clears throat> you can use the same one, like fix cars or uh, anything else that comes to mind. Okay. One of my responsibility. Uh, one of my responsibility is to. Uh, feed. Feed the the cat. Good. Now use the same example, but using one of my responsibilities is without the two part. One of my responsibility is making some tea. That's good. Making something, some tea. That's good. Um, so that's these are the different vocabularies that are going to be uh, found. Just as you as you as you can see, there's a lot of differences. Just if one little word changes. That's the importance of knowing all of the preposition and all of the different expressions, because once you pronounce it or once you say something else, use, for example, when I, if I said one of my responsibilities is to making sure. If I was a uh, manager, uh, which I'm not, but if I was a manager, then somebody would say, hey, that's not how you say it. And the, the um, language is so important that it can diminish somebody. Even if you know it in your head, 
but if you say it wrong, you are already considered less knowledgeable. So uh, these little vocabularies are what we will uh, hopefully progress towards, inshallah, with time, and hopefully we can master every single one of them. Um, today was just a quick introduction. I, I know uh, we got on a little bit late, but that's fine. Even if this is the little bit that we got, I think it's a lot of information that we will practice on. And I will send you like a worksheet to make sure that all of these new vocabularies are really understood. Like I say, almost always uh, practice is the way to know the vocabulary. Once you practice it, you will know that next time you will know that this is the way to say such things. Um, with that, um, that, that, that's, that concludes our session. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Okay, I have one question. Uh, one question. I would like to ask you something. Uh, can you can you send me this PDF because I wanna reading and preparing and write the board and uh, make sentences with uh, with uh, in my book notes. Okay, definitely yes. I will send you the worksheet, a worksheet and the the, the book as well. And um, we will work through until we hopefully reach a level that you are comfortable with. Thank you, thank you. You are you, welcome. You make, you, Allah, you make me happy and you, you do something that's very, very, very great for, and for me and something well, else. As thank long you, as inshallah. you... you I, will, uh, I, will talk with, I will talk with my mom to pray, uh, to pray for you, inshallah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I will say I'm in. And hopefully um, I can uh, benefit you a lot more and uh, others as well. Inshallah. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Inshallah. And have a nice day, have a good one. And when you are free, please talk to me. Okay, I will do so.